Hello, Brandusers and BCMA Spain. I am Jeff Gomez. It is wonderful to be able to talk to you today. Uh, I'm going to uh, start sharing my screen in a moment, but it's a great pleasure. Uh, um, I've only been to Spain a couple of times, and um, hopefully uh, uh, next time I'll be able to come and see you uh, uh, directly. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about new types of storytelling that are very exciting. And um, I'm going to uh, share my screen so that um, uh, you can uh, uh, see my slides. There you go. And, um, and off we go. Um, uh, the future of uh, brand storytelling is collective journey. There are new models of storytelling that are transform, uh, transforming corporate and brand narrative. Um, and I've prepared this uh, presentation special to you. Um, we have to face a significant challenge because the age of broadcast, meaning a very few people are communicating to a very many people, uh, that's over. Now, um, uh, uh, movies, uh, TV shows uh, and the communications of uh, corporations and brands are uh, just a part of a pervasive communication that involves many people at the same time. Those people want to have their voices heard. If you ignore those people, um, uh, they will move on to someone else who is heard. Social media gives us all a voice and we, we must respond to it. And uh, to use standard uh, uh, procedures for storytelling, the standard cycle of storytelling, it's not working uh, as well. I began to think about this way back in the 1980s when I first saw these uh, uh, computers that allowed for uh, many people to communicate with each other at the same time. Um, uh, the gray space in the middle. <laughs> it, it means that um, uh, we are no longer leaning back and simply watching the screen, and the screen is no longer simply uh, dictating didactically the story. We are somehow meeting each other in this kind of gray space where we are interacting with the story and the story is interacting with us. I took these concepts and started to uh, come up with a, um, a, a kind of um, a methodology that, uh, that became a very, very uh, successful. Um, uh, uh, it's called transmedia storytelling. And uh, we worked it into some products uh, in the 1990s that were successful enough for me to form a company called Starlight Runner Entertainment. Uh, we are a New York-based production company uh, that has uh, started to work on uh, major brands and big entertainment franchises using uh, the transmedia technique. Now, that technique is all about uh, a kind of 360 storytelling. In the old school, the movie um, uh, was successful, and then you had a, a, a novelization of the movie maybe even a video game of the movie. It was the same story repeated over and over, but the quality dropped off. So it, um, <clears throat> it wasn't very good after a while. Nowadays, you want your story to last and you want your story to be able to navigate this pervasive communication. So you turn the pieces of your communication into like a puzzle that can be assembled by your audience. And, um, and when it fits together, there is elegance, there is appreciation, the, the audience uh, enjoys the experience and shares it. So an example of transmedia story, uh, storytelling is like a Star Wars, right? You have the, the movies, you have novels and comic books and games, and they all fit together. Right, even the Disney Plus uh, content fits into the greater Star Wars storyline. But what you also have to start to think about is the fact that uh, the fans have their own creativity and want to express that creativity with fan fiction, with YouTube videos uh, that um, uh, examine all of the aspects of Star Wars and, and things like that. These are um, uh, 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 a part of the 
uh, kind of super narrative of the Star Wars universe. They all come together into a meta narrative, a larger story that we have to consider because if we ignore the fans, they will go away. So I'm the CEO. Uh, I have created uh, all kinds of uh, intellectual properties that leverage transmedia storytelling, um, these uh, um, a kind of entertainment franchises. Um, and, um, and we've been uh, a little bit successful. Uh, we've worked on Avatar, uh, Men in Black, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, helping uh, companies to examine this core narrative and uh, allow for it to extend so that the universe moves out across multiple platforms in such a way that um, uh, it is still cohesive and enjoyable. The essence of the brand is examined and infused into these other uh, media. Um, we also created uh, a number of these um, uh, uh, universes uh, for uh, brands like um, uh, Mattel and Hot Wheels and Coca-Cola and Happiness Factory um, uh, so that uh, the consumer uh, who enjoys this content uh, can enjoy it on a mobile phone, video game, the toy itself, the, the Coca-Cola drink, um, the advertising, and things like that. Um, so for centuries, every agency, company, studio, and writer has relied on the hero's journey, the circular narrative of the hero's journey story model. Um, but um, uh, nonlinear trans-platform communication is disrupting that model. So to younger people, these tropes of classic storytelling have begun to feel slow, obvious, and dated. We yearn for a new, far more dynamic and participative approach. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick example of this. Uh, the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, is successful. People enjoy the, the film. But a Squid Game on Netflix from South Korea is 10, 20, 40 times more successful in terms of the audience reached and in terms of the communication, the dialogue that everyone has about Squid Game. Um, uh, that is uh, uh, amplified because of the participation of the audience, because we're talking about it and expressing ourselves about how engaging uh, this, this Squid Game uh, narrative is. Um, so, you know, we see ourselves as the hero of, of our own stories, but often in the hero's journey cycle, the more James Bond kind of cycle, the result is, is conflict and, and violence in a, a, a kind of polarized way, a very familiar way, right? It is the survival of the fittest. The um, uh, uh, ideology is very, very singular, very Hollywood. But uh, this is becoming tiresome and antiquated. So we have to think about uh, a different way to tell the stories, right? Now, the hero's journey story, of course, is important to all of us because uh, it's where we started as a species, as human beings. Um, uh, we were born. Uh, as a youth, we are um, uh, told that we are going to have to leave the cave to get food, to get fire, to get people. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, and that's scary. Uh, and an older person um, uh, teaches us the way we go out and we fight, right? We fight for our survival. We kill the animals and bring them home for food. Uh, we make war with others uh, to, to survive. Uh, and then we bring the prizes home and we are celebrated for our heroism. Uh, this is something that allowed for us to survive, but it, it, because of the internet age, now all of us are asserting our rightness on others. Um, and this is creating multiple uh, uh, conflicts. Um, we need to think about a different way to be mindful of the, the conduct of, of who we are and what our communication is. So in the old school, that model, the old narrative hero's journey model is driven on conflict, 
the model is weighted toward the masculine, right? Because most of the writers um, uh, are um, uh, men. Um, the narrative is linear, right? Because our stories tend to be short these days, like 60 seconds or half an hour or an hour, maybe two, um, uh, the narrative has beginning, middle and end. It's very linear. Um, uh, uh, often we are fighting a villain uh, who is perhaps defeated at the end, but what the villain represents, the system that the villain represents is unchanged. Um, uh, and so uh, there's going to be another villain, which is uh, uh, tiresome. It, it's perpetuating the conflict. And of course, there is a good versus evil uh, binary. We are so used to just having a bad guy that needs to be crushed. Um, it is not um, uh, conducive uh, to the kind of storytelling that is rising and is needed uh, right now. I discovered a new way of looking at story that's actually about 40,000 years old. Uh, this uh, indigenous Australian uh, uh, pattern of thinking uh, of interlocked uh, symbols, icons, uh, and a nonlinear uh, kind of narrative. And uh, I became very inspired to think about how this map is similar to uh, the way that we are communicating through social media and through the internet. Um, uh, so um, uh, I began to build upon this notion with a model called collective journey. Um, it is a, a model that I am observing across the world that is not like the simple circle, but more like a lightning bolt. It is everywhere at once. Um, it forks in multiple directions. It's brilliant and it gets things done. <laughs> um, in the collective journey model, uh, the protagonist is one of a collective. They are a, a member of a community, but other people in the community are also represented. Um, the narrative is sometimes driven by a cause in collective journey, meaning we don't need something terrible to happen to us personally. We can see an injustice and together as a community address the injustice. The narrative is weighted toward a non-gendered impulse, right? So when we looked at um, a happiness factory, the Coca-Cola campaign, we, um, uh, we, we didn't care about uh, uh, who was male and who was female. We cared about how the theme of Happiness Factory, the fact that true happiness happens in between your ears um, and um, uh, infused that theme into all of the uh, characters. The, uh, the challenge can be huge and pervasive. In Collective Journey narratives, we are addressing systemic uh, uh, challenges, and those challenges can be addressed. Uh, I'm from New York City, so you're hearing uh, fire engines. <laughs> um, the, uh, the narrative may be nonlinear. Anybody who plays video games these days um, uh, can, uh, uh, can tell that you can move about a, a story world in all directions. And, and still have a great time and have a compelling experience. <clears throat> and there are multiple perspectives and shifting viewpoints in collective journey narratives. Um, uh, this means that you can um, uh, uh, examine an important issue from all kinds of, of uh, uh, different uh, uh, directions and, um, and that characters can express different thoughts and different feelings about the issue. So um, uh, like ancient communal storytelling practices, the collective journey model has, is omnidirectional as we see in video games, social media, online worlds, the metaverse, um, immersive experiences. It is subject to extraordinary scrutiny um, and it can be misinterpreted. <laughs> um, uh, uh, collective journey stories are capable of multiple simultaneous variations, right? There are many Batman characters. There are uh, all kinds of Spider-Man characters, uh, variants in the Marvel uh, universe. 
uh, they're dialogue based, right? We must understand that we can no longer simply tell a story. There is going to be uh, someone who responds to our story and we have to be prepared to respond to the response. So it's dialogue based. Our stories can be changed. So we have to be prepared to handle uh, attempts to change our story. Um, uh, and there are all kinds of methods to do that. Um, and our stories are porous. Um, uh, the president of the United States, uh, you can speak to directly to him through Twitter and, um, uh, and somebody on his team is going to recognize what you have to say. <laughs> so um, uh, when you think about collective journey worlds, um, uh, they are uh, systems in need of repair. Uh, think about this beautiful floating gem uh, each character is a part of the facets of the, the gem, and, uh, and there's a big crack in the gem. Um, and so we all have to somehow reconcile with each other, sometimes fight with each other, but ultimately all of us must repair the crack in that gem or the gem will be smashed, right? Um, uh, so uh, uh, the, that's the, 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 the suspense, the threat of, uh, that we face in collective journey narratives, whether they're a family, a community, a whole region, a world, a galaxy, but also the meta structure of your narrative um, must be put into place and include the greater world of your audience and the storyteller. We are a part of that story, even though we are not in the diegesis of the story, the story proper, we are still present in the exegesis uh, uh, to be able to communicate about it. When you look at um, uh, the, the narratives, particularly on uh, uh, networks like uh, Netflix, which are global uh, television channels, it's amazing how many of their uh, shows are successful. I work with Netflix and uh, consult on uh, their uh, capability to create stories that reflect the uh, different viewpoints of people uh, from around the world. Um, uh, so when you're comparing the hero's journey to the collective journey, um, uh, just think of the difference between the Karate Kid from the 1980s, that movie, and Cobra Kai, which is on Netflix right now. Karate Kid, very simple. There is a bad guy. Our, our hero, um, uh, uh, Daniel San, uh, is being bullied by him. He's trained by a mentor and ultimately confronts the bully in a tournament and kicks him in the face. Yay, we all cheer because the, the bully, the evil bully got his comeuppance. In Cobra Kai, there is a, a whole system of characters, each of whom represents a different perspective in this world that has to contend with the possibility of violence. Um, uh, and, um, and in fact, uh, the, there is no true good and true evil. Everyone just is kind of a human being trying to uh, surmount things like trauma, uh, trauma in their past. And they have to transcend that trauma and, and try to reconcile because if they don't, a lot of people will be harmed and, um, and they don't want uh, for a lot of people to be harmed. That's really interesting and compelling as a narrative. So to summarize, collective journey narratives are systems in need of repair. You have to identify that system and look at the perspectives of everyone in it, even if it comes to things like your brand and your brand communication. Who is everyone? Uh, in that world, that story world, and what do they think? What might they think that is against your brand? What is your brand doing to make the world better? You need those perspectives. And then you have to think about how to reconcile uh, the, the conflicts, the possible conflicts that are involved with your brand um, by acknowledging and validating criticism um, and, uh, and clarifying when things are not clear to the consumer. Um, and in doing so, you then have to reconcile. You have to um, uh, you know, uh, apologize if there is truly a problem 
or um, uh, reach out your hand uh, if there is a misunderstanding and invite the consumer back into your narrative. So just to show you that there is a, a, um, a process, here is the hero's journey, 18 stages, which you can look up on the web, but there is 18 stages to collective journey as well. So this is an actual model. We have tested it over and over again. I'm glad to answer questions. You can reach out to me uh, by uh, emailing me at jeff at starlightrunner.com or read more about Collective Journey Narrative at blog.collectivejourney.com. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at jeff underscore Gomez. Humanity's greatest story will be the one we create to enlighten our species reconcile our people and redesign our deeply flawed systems. This can be done with narrative. It all starts with story. Thank you so much.